you're always free to ask. Like, what's the staff of one? Or who were the runaways? I should get going. The gameplay of XCOM with the mystical side of the Marvel Universe sounds weird on paper, but Marvel's Midnight Suns makes you believe in magic a little bit. But while the combat is a pretty damn good gameplay loop, everything outside of combat is just needless busy work. Um, what? Now, obviously, before I get into it, some people are really enjoying this game, but for me... This guy... This is not my kind of guy. The combat is fun. There are some things that made me, though, flat shut my brain off. That being said, though, if you're enjoying the game, then dude, power to you. I'm glad you're digging it. Developed by Fire Axis Games, the team behind XCOM and Civilization, Marvel's Midnight Suns is a turn-based strategy card game that looks fantastic and is surprisingly engaging when it comes to combat. Now, with previous games we've had in the Marvel Universe, we've had open-world Spider-Man games and the fun Mass Effect light in Guardians of the Galaxy, or the fantastic Ultimate Alliance series that does need to come back to PC, but Midnight Suns doesn't overly fit the mold for a Marvel game, but it also sort of works. Tell me more! While most fans are aware of the Avengers, the Guardians and the X-Men, the Midnight Suns are a faction that some may not be aware of. Now, rather than mutants and heroes and, well, space pirates, the Midnight Suns are a group of supernatural heroes like Ghost Rider, Blade, and the mighty morphing Morbius. All right then, it's morphin' time! And naturally, the game has a supernatural setting around it. While yes, there are familiar mutants and Avengers here and there, the core structure of the team is based around magic demons and ancient evil. Midnight Sun starts off with Hydra resurrecting and awakening Lilith, the mother of demons, who then allies herself with Hydra, and it's up to the Midnight Suns to stop her. It's pretty standard, really. After her awakening, the game kicks off with Lilith breaching into the Sanctum Sanctorum as she's after the Darkhold, the evil MacGuffin book from the mediocre WandaVision and Doctor Strange, the multiverse of madness. Black Bolt could destroy you with one whisper from his mouth. What mouth? Now shut up! Shut up! We start off with controlling Iron Man, Doctor Strange and Captain Marvel before we're given the character of Hunter, who is the son slash daughter of Lilith. Now the character of Hunter is where we get to create our own hero in the Marvel Universe, and it is the core player of the game. Now I've not really played a game like this before, my only real experience with turn-based games is Pokemon games, well, that and Subverse, but that game is pretty damn shit and that's a story for another time. And the Pokemon games are the only real turn-based games that I like. I've had plenty of friends saying I need to look into Final Fantasy and all that sort of stuff, but turn-based games just aren't really my jam. But the combat and core gameplay of Midnight Suns itself really worked for me. Rather than you attacking, then awaiting for the enemy attack, your turn has multiple actions and movements, and there's an environment to move around in too. Actions like attacking and buffing and healing use card-like actions that you'll have equipped at the bottom of the screen. Now, while it is a little confusing at first, the card system is relatively straightforward after a few hours of gameplay. Each hero has a set deck of abilities or cards that they can use, and during gameplay, each hero's deck is shuffled together. Now, combat itself is visually stunning, and there are a little similarities to, say, that of chess. You get a lay of the battle area, what enemies need to be taken out first, and what environmental items there are to assist. Now some attacks can push back enemies into other enemies or effects, causing daisy chains of effects if you will, and other small items like boxes or furniture might be able to be picked up and thrown at enemies. One of the great visual features I found was that during random gameplay moments after attacking an enemy with a hard hitting attack, it would send them flying and then damage the furniture or the walls around them. Graphically, Midnight Suns looks pretty good in combat, and it's got some small touches as well. For example, Doctor Strange's magical attacks are popping out of the screen, and the flowing cloak of levitation looks brilliant during combat. Robbie Reyes summoning and using the Hell Charger looks dope, and I loved using that ability. But once I got outside the combat, that's where my brain switched off. Aww, see that? Teamwork goosebumps. You on? Now during combat I found myself focusing on my strategy and what attacks I wanted to perform, but outside of combat, 
That's where I started to notice some issues and some story character options that just made me nope so hard, I found myself skipping nearly everything inside the Midnight Sun's base of operations. Now between missions you'll have some free roam exploration around the base of operations and it's a bit like say in Mass Effect but it doesn't really work for me personally. Graphically the facial features and some of the movement looks a little dated. Tony Stark's face looks like it was pulled out of an early PlayStation 4 or late PlayStation 3 game and also looked a little pre-rendered. I was kind of waiting for the graphics to just pop in in some moments. During cutscenes I found Doctor Strange's cloak of levitation wouldn't move with his character model and it looked and acted like it was made out of plastic rather than a cloth material. Hell, I was running this on high graphics and look at Peter Parker's face. That's enough. That's enough. There was even a bug where Robbie Reyes' hell charger didn't spawn in and just even when it does spawn in, look at the level of detail to it. You could push this across the finish line or tow it. Now, while the gameplay itself is fun and challenging, meaning the combat areas outside where you can socialize with other heroes like Spider-Man and Iron Man and Ghost Rider, and you can do small puzzles feel a little out of place. Roaming around in the base of operations is similar to that to yes, the Normandy in Mass Effect, but it is nowhere near as polished as that. Here you can socialize and become friends with your fellow Midnight Sun members. And at first I was a bit interested as there are some cool characters and Robbie Ray as Ghost Rider is one of my personal favorites in the comics and they flat fucking ruined him in this game. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine and you just can't get into it because they would never understand. He refers to his spirit of vengeance as Sparky and that he can't wait for us to meet Sparky and that Sparky's not loud inside the mansion anymore. I know Sparky's excited to meet you. Sparky? You blew it! Now if you know anything about Robbie Reyes as Ghost Rider, you'll know that he's not a normal Ghost Rider. Yes, he has a Dodge Charger instead of a motorbike unlike traditional Ghost Riders, but he also doesn't have a spirit of vengeance, and he is possessed by the spirit of Eli Morrow, who is a deceased serial killing Satanist. And if you've not read the books, I'll leave it at that because they're actually pretty good books. But having one of my favorite characters in Marvel Comics finally in a video game and also looking kind of dope, but then changing his sort of dark origin character and the story just made me disconnect with Robbie Reyes in this game and subsequently with everyone else in this game. I have no idea why we're given Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider if you're basically going to make him a traditional Ghost Rider with a spirit of vengeance. It'd be like, say, getting a DC comics based game and giving us the young teenager Kyle Rayner Green Lantern, but then having the backstory of Hal Jordan instead of Kyle Rayner's own unique and creative origin. Why not give us instead then Johnny Blaze or Danny Ketch or shit, even Cosmic Ghost Rider? But mind you, if they ruined Cosmic Ghost Rider's story and character, that'd probably even be more of a crime if you ask me. But why am I going on about Ghost Rider and Midnight Suns? Well, he was the main core reason that I wanted to play this game, and as soon as I unlocked him and the option to hang out with him between missions, that's when my view on the game started to change. Each character seems to be set on being your bestest buddy and wants to hang out with you, and it just kind of felt off for a game like Midnight Suns. I feel like our character should be growing and trying to prove themselves rather than having the option to sit back and watch a movie with a fellow hero. Uh, enough about our crappy parents. You missed out on decades of good movies. It's my solemn duty to fill this knowledge gap with the best examples I can provide. The game seems too friendly for a game based around the mystical arts, supernatural and, well, demons. From this, I had zero interest in socializing with any of the heroes between missions and I found myself skipping basically every cutscene too because it just didn't work for me. Again, if it worked for you or you are enjoying this game and you're enjoying the story and everything like that, I'm glad you're enjoying it. It just wasn't for me. Also, sadly, you're kind of forced into returning to the base of operations after every mission and you can't just beeline it straight to the next mission, nor can you do things like the forge where you can upgrade your skills and such you'll actually need to send your character to sleep and reset to a new day. So for me, who wanted to skip anything to do with socializing or exploring the base of operations, being forced to sleep to start a new mission or even side missions or even to upgrade my gear got real old real quick. 
Now, when you're in the Midnight Sun's base of operations, there are some simple puzzles to perform with Agatha Harkness, and I found they were just, they weren't for me. I also found as well the lip syncing and the graphical details for characters are a frame or two off, and it was one of those things that once you notice them, you can't unnotice them. <sighs> fuzzy. My predictions are fuzzy. If you don't mind, I'll do the jokes. The way the base of operations work is you can go there and you can upgrade your hero's card abilities, you can unlock new cards, swap out and change what your character is wearing or what suits your allies are wearing. Speaking of changing what your character looks like, the character customization here looks like it was ripped out of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. I mean, just look at the clothing options. Okay, so we've established I'm not a fan of anything outside of the combat. There are the heaps of loading screens for like everything and it got annoying, sure. When I started the game, there were proper gaps in the dialogue between characters and it just looked funny and awkward at the same time. Man, the others are really going to love you. Others? I also had some high frame rate stuttering whenever I would do a character's ultimate ability, and while the ultimate abilities looked fantastic, I kind of avoided using them in some instances just because it would freeze the game for about 3 to 5 seconds. However, the core gameplay and combat of Midnight Suns is entertaining and challenging. Some missions require you to disable a vehicle before they can leave the area, which is a challenge when the AI are actively defending a vehicle. Some heroes like Wolverine feel powerful in combat, and I was skipping dialogue and cutscenes and building relationships with my heroes just so I could immediately jump back into this combat. The variety of heroes available are not only yes familiar with the likes of Iron Man and Wolverine, but also unique and diverse that you might find yourself with a new favourite hero. Again, I highly recommend reading the all new Ghost Rider series. So, do I recommend Midnight Suns? Well, I like the combat, obviously and it's actually fun, and turn-based games normally just aren't my jam. It does, however, feel like it is a triple-A mobile game in some instances, and once I personally disconnected with the characters, all I wanted to do was combat and nothing else. But, well, this might be a game that you yourself need to play and form your own opinion on, but for now, Midnight Suns is now available. <laughs>